Hello people, this is Christian and welcome back to my computer and Fusion 360 this is Sunday evening and I'm playing around with this uh, what you might call fidget toy, we can turn over and like so we can see the full body uh, interlocking sphere rings which you can 3D print and play around with uh, this is from a couple different YouTube videos people are playing around with this and on the last one I watched Fusion Physics Schools video, there was a discussion and we tried to make this a bit easier to sketch because it's really boring to sketch all these circles here or the arcs of these different shapes here which is are basically inters, uh, inters, uh, spheres that are what call them? concentric is the word I'm looking for uh, anyway uh, I have a workflow here that makes this little model just turn on our parameters we can change things like we can make it free. We can make it seven bodies. We can change the center of the first body here. Let's do it 20. And then means we can add up the thickness of the 18. So we get a really big one. And yeah, we can play around with the things. We can change the four millimeter thickness of the body. So we can change the gap. The gap is for for the pink in how much distance you need. 0 so 3 you make me need. And of course. Uh, through geometry, if we make too many of these bodies, we will basically uh, end up with a ring at the end that will fall off. Most of these will uh, fall off and stay or not stay on. That's just how geometry works. Let's go back to 7. So I'm very crashed. It sometimes crashes when I do too much changing, like that. Let's go and have a look at that. That's uh, because I'm using uh, patterning sketches, I think. But anyway, this is not a really a good workflow. This is mostly a stupid workflow. But why not share it so you can have something to laugh at and, and make your Sunday a slightly brighter day. We gonna start with some parameters, new design parameters. I'm not saving the file or anything now. I'm gonna show you workflow. Uh, this is not a beginner's thing. If you're a beginner, you can watch it, but it's like this is not a tutorial. This is a stupid workflow. Uh, what we gonna start with? Let's start with a uh, quantity of uh, bodies. That's how many bodies you want. We want to switch that to no, no units and let's make five to start with. We gonna have a center body, center, let's say the center body. Gonna have a di oops, no, do a diameter, it's not dead on arrival. Uh, five, what do you see? Uh, we're gonna have uh, some uh, woo ring. I'm not very good at naming things right now. M naming really different, stupid ways. Anyway, do as you want. Four millimeters. Uh, we're gonna do a uh, well, gap freeze. Zero point two. We're gonna need a ring. Hive, that's going to be the hive. Let's do this. We did uh, the center body five. This needs to be smaller, or the center body's uh, diameter will disappear in size. Let's do four. I think I'm going to go back to six. We can have five for here now. With that, we have the most input uh, parameters we need. And I'm doing one parameter. I'm doing it slightly different from other people. Uh, maybe you, I haven't watched all the videos. Um, the ring thickness is uh, how thick each, not really how thick the body of a ring is. But it's going to be the distance from ring to ring and the gap is going to be removed from that. It makes the parameters and the sketching slightly easier. It's like, like most things in life, it depends on your view of things. So, we're going to do one more. Uh, we call it outer diameter. Uh, this is going to be the outer diameter of, of the full body because I will use that uh, and that's going to include one gap too much But I don't care about that Do let's see so that's going to be our center body of course diameter this it's going to be plus uh, Ring thickness times Quantity of bodies Minus one because we need to remove the center body or we get one body too much. Uh, ring high, no, not ring height. Sorry, I picked the wrong one. Ring thickness. Uh, multiply the quantity of bodies minus one. And of course, as we're talking about ring thickness, we have rings on both sides of the center. So we need to multiply that by two. 
And just for comment, I like to put calcs and also calculated comments uh, uh, parameter. Let's open this up. So we have center body plus ring thickness times quantity bound is minus one. That's for center body. And ring thickness is on one side of the center point of a sphere. So we need multiple by two. That's good. Hit OK. And let's start sketching. Start the sketch. Sketch, please. We're going to do it from the front now. And yeah, let's start it quite simple. We start with rectangle. Hit rectangle up here. We're going to start from our uh, radian point. Going to use that. And I will make one more line up here immediately. We're going to clear in a short time. I'm going to make these two equal. And I will put a dimension from here to here. This is the same as our outer diameter for now. I will put your dimension on this. This is just a useless that we can do 10 millimeters. We will not use this. This is a locked dimension. And I'm going to hit escape. Now we're going to start sketching our body part slightly here. We're going to make a line. I'm going to go in, create a gap, and go out again like that. We're going to make a coincident between this line. I want it to be coincident to the midpoint. So hold down shift until I get it. If you don't hold down shift, you will not get this midpoint uh, constraint point. Hit like that. We're going to dimension from here to here. This is going to be our center body and we cut the gap from the center body. It's going to be slightly smaller. So that's going to be our uh, sorry, center body diameter, but divided by two because we are dimensioned by radius. And things get in the wrong order, so we're going to move down this. We will dimension from here to here. This will be our little gap. So about that, this is going to be the center body. Now we're going to do the rest of the rings. So we're going to do a line. We're going to start here. We're going to go up, we're going to go in, go up, and go here. Once again, coincident between this and here. Can you please be coincident like that? We can open up the sketch to keep a good look when it's still not fully fully defined. So let's do that. We're going to dimension from here to here. This is going to be our ring thickness. Ring thickness. And here going to be a little gap. We already used the gap, so we can simply click on this dimension here. I don't need to type it once more. And of course, yeah, we have still a blue line. We have this line here that's flying around. So we're going to constrain it. We can use collinear or you can use coincident 20 point, but collinear with this tune, basically what we want. And we are still fully not defined. Why not? We have a point up here that can move around. Let's check. Yeah, this move can move around. We're going to do coincident between uh, this point and that line. We have a fully defined sketch. We need one more line. We need a line from here straight out. And a coincident between uh, this point and the midpoint once again. Now I'm going to use something that you don't like to use. We're going to do a pattern in sketch. Yeah, yeah, I know you failed. What did you fail now? You get confused sometimes when I hit the wrong keys. Uh, anyway, it's solved it. Yeah. I love the sketch for solving fusion. Sometimes it gets get confused when you do stupid things like this. Uh, rectangular pattern in sketch. We select rectangular with, with a non filled blue square. See, and this is rectangular pattern of features, bodies, and so on. This is in sketch. And what we want to pattern is uh, this line, uh, this line, this line, and a little small line here. And direction, we select a long, beautiful line over here. We're going to use spacing, yes. The quantity is going to be quantity of bodies, and of course, minus one. We only created the center body. The distance is going to be the thickness of our rings. And we hit OK. And what we get? We get the close profile. Very nice, thank you. Gonna finish sketch and see if we have, sorry, from the sketch one. Why are you not fully defined? Little, little point up there. Did I drop you? There's a point flying around here. Do you see that? A white point. If you see white points, you have missed something. So I don't want to connect it to this line here because this line comes with a pattern. I want uh, uh, to do horizontal. Sorry. I thought bad thinking of me. Horizontal from that point to this. Sorry, I made a mistake. By doing that, we have a fully defined sketch. Thank you. So the problem wasn't fusion as usually. It is user error. My error. 
we have a gap, center, this, this, this should be everything. Finish sketch. We're gonna use revolve. Revolve. Let's start with uh, this here. The axis gonna be. I prefer to pick the axis. Could pick the line, but I like to use the axis. So I know what I'm doing. Uh, things spin around, and let's see. Can we? You now. I know the full. I want to do angle, and let's do like this. That's a positive way. So we're gonna do one degree. One degree is enough. Second revolve from this sketch up here axis once again the red one angle again and this time we're going to do 180 degrees and of course because it hits the other body wants a cut we don't want to cut we don't want to do a join thank you we're going to hide this sketch open up here you now we've done a strange body here the purpose of this body is to create this face here which are what you're not going to revolve and the little one degree here means we have a small small sliver connecting all of these faces what we can do now we can do revolve once more of this face we just created axis i'm gonna hide the body i want to choose this blue little axis here and this time it's gonna be full new body hit okay uh, the tool body we used here earlier, we can now remove. So right click, remove to clean up the, our model. And we're gonna create a sketch from the front. We're gonna do a rectangle, and for ease we do a center rectangle. Click here. So this is gonna be our hive of our rings. Tab over, and this is gonna be our outer diameter, like that. Finish sketch, we have a nice square, heat E for extrude. One side, no, we're going to symmetric, the full width, and full width, once again, it's going to be outer diameter. And fusion always uh, goes for cut, and we don't want to cut, we do not do this intersect. And we can hide the sketch, and by doing that, we can also add now, just for the section analysis, because it's easier to see things. And yes, we have once again created the little toy. And we can now go in and play around with our parameters. Uh, what I would do here, this looks really small, so we're gonna pump up the center body. Let's do that. Eight millimeters. This means eight, we can creep up with this with up to seven. It, because if we do a high number here, we're gonna hide the center body. So you have to think a bit when you add the dimensions here. So by this, we can do like this, or we might want to take down the ring thickness to three millimeters. Give me 2.5, make them really small so we can more. Because our baby will pop apart. I have tried to print with too many bodies. And we can change the number of bodies. We can do seven. We can do four. There's a small thing that crisis sometimes you go up to, like I did in the beginning, if you go up to high number to 20 and then down to four again or something like that. It sometimes crashes the schedule to have to redo the, the feature. So this is mostly a totally useless workflow. It's must mostly for the fun of it, but you can use things in Fusion or other CAD software to create the geometry you want. It's sometimes you need to go uh, across the pond to get a uh, local call it in English. You have to you have to do things that you nearly doesn't think will bring the final result, but you will end up with something you want. Anyway, sorry for me rambling around. This is Sunday and that's how my brain works these days. And it is said, take care. See you around and goodbye.